Get clear. The first step in clearing away whatever form of clutter that fills your life is to get a real understanding of what is going on in your life. This is your personal strategy for less clutter. Please understand that getting clear about clutter doesn't mean that you are going to resolve to eliminate all clutter in your life. That's not going to happen. Instead, you're going to work on a strategy for less clutter. I hate absolutes precisely because they're impossible. To say that you're going to resolve to have absolutely no clutter is really setting yourself up for disappointment later on. Your goal should be to just lessen the clutter that you have. As it stands now, you are probably dealing with so much clutter that you really don't have any perspective. Everything is distorted. Everything is warped. Everything is off-center. This, of course, leads to a very imbalanced view not only of your life, but your place in the world, who you are, what you're capable of, whether you're worthy or not, and other profound issues. You have to create your very own personal strategy for less clutter so you can stop thinking that you have to spend money that you don't have on stuff that you don't need to impress people that you don't even like. This is the key. It's the beginning. It's the first step, but it is crucial. If you're still unclear as to where to start, you need to first pay attention to the five signs that you are living a cluttered life. If any of these are present in your life, you are dealing with clutter. You have to understand that clutter, just like with a lot of things, is easy to spot in the beginning. Eventually, you get accustomed to it. It becomes part of your mental landscape. In fact, if you were to clear the way overnight so that there is some sort of black and white difference in your perception before and after you took away the clutter, you will actually miss it. I know it's shocking considering its effect on your attitude, mindset, emotions, relationships, and your capacity for action. But this is the absolute truth. Here are the five signs you are living a cluttered life. Sign number one, angst. Do you feel like something is missing in your life? You can't quite put your finger on it. But regardless of what you do, regardless of who you're with, and regardless of the stuff that you have around you, it seems that there's something missing. It seems that somehow, some way, the big jigsaw puzzle of your life just can't seem to fit together neatly and nicely. Somehow, some way, you feel that there's something defective. Something is off. Things don't quite fit, and at some level or another, it's bothering you. What's really frustrating about this is that it comes and goes. Sometimes it's very pronounced, but oftentimes it's just kind of like a low-level background emotional noise. You know it's there, but it's not so pressing and so imposing that it actually irritates you. At the end of the day, you still know it's there. Think of it like psychological peanut butter stuck at the top of your mouth. Have you ever had peanut butter stuck at the roof of your mouth? Annoying, right? However, as you continue to eat, you start getting used to it. But at the back of your head, you know it's still there. You drink what seems like a gallon of milk, but it's still there. Sign 2. Anxiety. Do you worry constantly? Do you think in worst-case scenarios? Has this ever happened to you? You worry yourself sick about what somebody is going to say what they will do, and how things will line up in the future. But things actually turned out okay. Things are far from ideal, but at least they're not the complete and total unmitigated disaster you had imagined. Has this ever happened to you? Did you feel any sense of relief when your worst fears did not materialize? If you're suffering from anxiety, you never get the sense of relief because by the time you see that your old fears about a certain event that was supposed to happen at a certain date did not come to pass, you're already thinking about something else. You're like working yourself up to greater and greater levels of frustration and fear only to see that things really aren't that bad. However, instead of feeling happy, content, or relieved, you're working yourself up over something else. This goes on and on and on. It's as if you have this sword that's right on top of your head and at any given time, it will fall and you're just going to get hurt really badly. You don't know when. You can't even picture how it will play out yet. For some reason or another, you feel that you're going to suffer some sort of loss or some sort of harm. Right before you're about to burn out, things clear up, but by that point, you're worried about something else. In fact, in certain situations, you suffer so much anxiety that you physically get sick. Maybe you rock yourself for comfort, or you engage in some sort of personal ritual to center your mind or trigger some sort of emotional calm. Sign number three, you need more, more, more. Have you ever wondered about stuff that makes you happy? 
There are things in your life now that make you happy at some level or other. Have you ever wondered that if you were to get more of that stuff, you will be happier? A lot of people think along these lines. A lot of people think that if they just have the right car, live in the right part of town, live in a big enough house, move around in the right social circles, then they will have everything they need. Sure enough, through enough planning, they're able to get stuff. However, their enjoyment and personal joy lasts a very short time. Soon enough, they're back to where they began and they need more and more and more. There's actual psychological science to this. According to a fairly recent study, money does make people happy. I know that's not politically correct. You're not supposed to say that. However, it's actually scientifically proven. Yes, when you buy stuff, it makes you happy. There is a measurable rush, a sense of fulfillment, a sense of completion, a sense of relief mixed with joy. This is real. The problem is, after some time, that feeling goes away. You are then looking to buy more stuff to get that feeling again. Does it sound familiar? Well, it should. This is a classic addiction cycle. It's no different from a sugar rush, as well as a cocaine, methamphetamine, or heroin experience. You get that nice little surge of great feelings in the beginning, then it dwindles, so you look for it again. However, the next time you get that experience, it's never as good as the first time. I know this sounds crazy, but nothing really beats the first time you bought a car. It's your very own. I still remember my first car. It was a 1971 Toyota. It looked like a sardine can on wheels, but it didn't matter. I loved that car. Now, I'm on my fifth SUV, and I can tell you with all sincerity and honesty that the rush that I get when I sign on the dotted line at the auto dealer to drive home my new SUV is never as intense as when I got that first beat-up Toyota Compact. It doesn't even come close. Right now, I'm at this stage of my life where when I buy a new car, it's basically like trading in old shoes. You know, after so many years, things start to fall apart, and the ride and the handling aren't exactly like they were before. So I just buy the latest model. It's become a routine. However, when I first laid my eyes on my first car, it was magic. There was a mixture of anticipation, a sense of discovery. I mean, it smelled old because it was at least 15 years old when I bought it, but it was mine. It also helped that I was 17 at that time. However, you get my point. When you buy stuff to feel happy, it's like a sugar rush. The great feeling is undeniable. It exists. It's measurable. However, the problem is it's temporary. You crash and then you hunger again for that rush so you buy and buy and buy. And guess what? It doesn't plug in that need permanently. You're kind of like a rat chasing its tail. Sign 4. You feel that there is never enough. Have you ever sat down and thought about what you have, what you've accomplished, and who you are as a person and, in all honesty, said, yeah, I have enough? Chances are, if you were like the average American or Western European, the answer would be a big, fat no. You're always looking over your shoulder. What does your neighbor have? Do they go on vacation every quarter? Why aren't you doing the same thing? Are they rolling in on a new BMW? Why can they do that when you can't? Do they have new stuff? Do they seem happier based on their Facebook updates? You get what I'm trying to get at. You feel that whatever you have accomplished and whatever you have gathered, bought, borrowed, rented is simply not enough. Now, don't get me wrong. Obviously, you feel that there's enough in terms of numbers. However, in terms of quality, fulfillment, value, worth, and everything else, there's just so much more out there. You have a lot on your hands, but you're constantly looking at bigger, better, brighter things. Sign 5. You're worried about losing it all. Interestingly enough, most people feel that they don't have enough, but they're worried sick at some level or other about losing the stuff that they don't have enough of. Quite an irony, right? If you put all these things together, you are living a cluttered life. The mental, psychological, as well as physical clutter surrounding you both inside and outside prevents you from living a truly meaningful, purposeful, and effective life. Don't be surprised if you feel that each day simply blends into the other, and there's really not much point or purpose behind each day. You go to your job, you put in eight hours, and it basically feels just like the same eight hours that you put in day after day. Each day is not really all that much different from the days that preceded it. You look forward to more stuff that you can buy, but by the time you buy them, you want to buy other stuff. 
You look forward to your vacation, but by the time you have finished your vacation, you can't wait for the next one. It's like this endless, pointless circle. The more you run, the more you stay in place. You tire yourself from running in place. Get clear by figuring out what is truly important to you. Now that you have analyzed your life based on the five signs of clutter I described above, figure out what truly is important to you. Here's a hint. If you're like most people, what truly is important has nothing to do with stuff. If you're like most people, it's not your possessions. They're not the most important to you. Unfortunately, I cannot give you the answer because you have your own life. We come from different walks of life. We have different experiences. We have different values and characters. You have to supply the answer to this. However, I have already given you a very important hint. It has nothing to do with possessions. Ask yourself what is truly important in my life. What would I trade everything for? What would I give everything up for? At this point, these are really big questions. Considering what you've been going through before, these questions may almost seem unanswered. Believe me, I've been where you are. I understand what you're going through. To simplify things, do a values audit. Values Audit 101. How do you audit your values? Very simple. Just whip out a piece of paper and ask yourself, assuming I don't care about what other people think of me and assuming that I'm not supporting anybody else or I'm responsible for anybody else, what would I want to do even if I'm not getting paid to do it? Write down a long list. Write down the first thing that comes to your mind. Don't edit yourself. Remember, there's no right or wrong answer here because the right answer to me may be pointless to you and vice versa. Remember, this is all about you. This is about your values. This is about your character. Don't worry about people thinking that you may be shallow or your values are too weird or you're stupid. Forget about that. Focus on what's real. Honestly, list down the things that really drive you. These are your values. At some level or another, they inform your life to the extent that you wake up every day and go through your day because you are informed by these values. Without these values, you won't get that energy. You won't get that motivation. It would be too easy to just stay in bed because whatever you do in life really wouldn't matter because there's nothing driving you. That's what I'm trying to discover. That's what I want you to remind yourself of. So, do a values audit. Here's the trick. List down everything. Be completely honest with yourself. Even if you know it's negative. Even if you think it's embarrassing or it somehow puts you in a negative light. Write it down. List it out. Don't edit yourself. Do a values detox. Now that you have listed down the stuff that's important to you, ask yourself, is this important to you because it really gives you meaning? Does it give you purpose to your life? Does it make life worth living? Does it trigger your sense of adventure? Does it engage your powers of imagination? Alternatively, do you prize something because that's what you're supposed to like? Have your parents been telling you since you were a little kid that you're supposed to be a certain way? that you're supposed to desire certain things and that you're supposed to look at life from a certain vantage point? Do you hang around certain people who look at the world from a particular perspective and do you see that in your values? Filter your values based on what you personally chose and external considerations. Maybe you're doing things or desiring things because that's what's expected of you. You kind of just automatically snapped into it. When you became an adult, you just quickly bought into what your parents were into. I need you to separate these two things because they're very different from each other. So do yourself a big favor. List down in one column values that you know came from you and are fully your own. In another column, put from the outside and then list down those values. This is how you detox because we're going to focus on your own values. You are going to try to get out from under values imposed on you or things you absorbed from other people. This is the first step of decluttering. You let go of external stuff. You focus on values that came from you. We're going to clean that up, but first, we need to step away from externally imposed clutter. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.